Terrence Bud Crawford, all of a sudden is getting a lot of favoritism from the sanctioning bodies. We're going to break all of that down and we're going to talk about it. Plus, Jerron Ennis has a message for Bud Crawford. We're going to talk about that also. But before we do all that, make sure you hit my like button, subscribe to the channel, and let's cook on all of it. Ever since Bud Crawford linked up with Turkey Alashik, it seems like he's having everything go his way when it comes to 154 pounds and all of the straps lining up for him to be able to go and grab him in two or three fights. And we still know that Bud Crawford still has three of the straps at 147. And we're going to talk about him and Jerron Ennis in this video and the message that Ennis has for Bud Crawford since Bud Crawford still is holding on to three of the straps at 147, even though he's made it clear that he's moved up to 154. Now, recently, Errol Spence, he came back in the picture and it was announced that him and Sebastian Fundora, they'll be fighting for the WBC strap. Now, when this was announced, and we seen that Errol Spence was only fighting for the WBC strap, even though Sebastian Fundora has the WBC and the WBO strap, I said to myself, why are they only fighting for the WBC if Sebastian Fundora holds two straps? Well, we found out recently that, nah, Sebastian Fundora, he'll be stripped of the WBO strap and Terrence Bud Crawford will be fighting Ismail Madrimov not only for the WBA strap, but he'll be fighting for the WBO strap that they're going to strip Sebastian Fundora of. And if you go on Box Rec, you'll see that Ismail Madrimov and Terrence Bud Crawford, they fight for the WBA and the WBO. Now, you might say to yourself, how is that even possible? Because Terrence Bud Crawford, he chose to fight Ismail Madrimov before Sebastian Fundora and Errol Spence was ever even announced. Yeah, it seemed kind of crazy, right? How is Terrence Crawford able to hold down all of these belts and have all of these rulings go in his favor and he already had a fight in place? We ain't even got to 147 pounds yet because almost at the same time that the announcement took place that Bud Crawford was going to be able to fight for two straps when he fights Ismail Maldromov, right after that, we found out that Terrence Bud Crawford has been named the champion in recess at 147. Well, let me make that clear for y'all. The WBC champion in recess at 147. Now, once again, you may ask yourself, how is Terrence Bud Crawford able to hold down all of these straps at 147 and he's fighting at 154 and told everybody that he's moving up? When, for example, Jamel Charlo moved up for one fight to fight Canelo Alvarez, and as soon as he moved up, the next thing we knew is Jamel Charlo was getting stripped of all of his straps at 154. That's why all of these fighters have been able to fight for these vacant straps. That's why Sebastian Pandora and Tim Zhu, they fought for the vacant WBC and the vacant WBA strap. And that's why Ismail Madrimov, who Terrence Bud Crawford is now fighting, got to fight for the vacant WBO strap, his last fight. And I know that's all confusing if y'all not keeping up with all that because shit, I keep up with it and it's confusing to me. But the bottom line is, Terrence Bud Crawford, it looks like that now all of a sudden, he's getting a lot of favoritism. And Jermail Charlo, he got treated like shit when it came to the sanctioning bodies. And what this shows you is none of these sanctioning bodies uphold any integrity except for the IBF. These sanctioning bodies, they work off how much they like you as far as what type of relationship they have personally with you and how big your name is. Obviously, Jamel Charlo didn't have a good relationship with the sanctioning bodies, so they treated him like shit. And as soon as they got a chance, they stripped him of all of his straps. Now, I know 
All the Terrence Bud Crawford diehard crybabies, y'all already in the comments cry. But I'm not shitting on Bud Crawford. If he's getting favoritism from the sanctioning bodies, hey, you know, that's all good. That's good for him because any fighter that's able to do these things, they gonna do it. If Errol Spence could do it, he would do it. If any of these fighters have the privilege of being able to do these type of things, they're going to take advantage of it. I'm talking about the sanctioning bodies and them not keeping the even playing field all the way around the board. The sanctioning body switching up the rulings and just doing different shit all of the time, right? They don't uphold no type of integrity. Like I said, none of the sanctioning bodies do. The only one that does is the IBF. And speaking of the IBF, Let's talk about the IBF world champion at 147 pounds, where, like I said, Terrence Bud Crawford still holds three of the straps. But you got Jerron Ennis, he holds the IBF strap, and his eyes are set on fighting Terrence Bud Crawford, whether it has to be at 147 or 154. But now that we got the ruling that Terrence Bud Crawford is still holding all of these straps at 147, and he was just named the champion in recess from the WBC. And all that means is that they're not going to strip him. He gets to hold on to the strap until they decide to strip him, I guess. Champion in recess, can't nobody else get the WBC strap because Terrence Bud Crawford is holding on to that strap. Now, the only question I have is, like Jerron Ennis has, why are you still holding on to the strap? If you ain't fighting at 147. So Boots Ennis, in the recent interviews that he's done, he's let it be known that he wants to smoke with Terrence Bud Crawford. And Bud Crawford got to go through him if he looks to ever fight at 147 pounds. Yeah, he got to come through me. So ain't nobody else in this division can beat me. And nobody else at 147 has a bigger name than I have. And Bud Crawford said he only wants to make big fights. So for the ones who crying, and I ain't even said nothing bad about Bud, but we know how y'all do. For the ones who crying in the comments, why is Terrence Bud Crawford still holding the straps at 147 if he ain't going to fight at 147? And if he is going to fight at 147, who has a bigger name than Jerron Boots Ennis at 147? What is a bigger fight than Terrence Bud Crawford and Jerron Boots Ennis at 147? If you can answer that while you're running your mouth, then we could talk. But you can't answer that because the only answer is no one. The best fight at 147 pounds is Jerron Boots Ennis. So now that we know that Terrence Bud Crawford, of course, he's trying to get these straps at 154. Of course, we know that Canelo Alvarez told him no for the millionth time. Canelo Alvarez told Turkey Alashik, no, he's not fighting Terrence Bud Crawford. And I would get into all of that, but that's a whole different video in itself. So if it ain't Errol Spence, who is a bigger fight for Terrence Bud Crawford? Jerron Ennis is the biggest fight. If we're talking about 154, if we're talking about 147, if it's not Errol Spence. So, like Jerron Ennis said, like Eddie Hearn said, that fight needs to happen. And we also heard rumors that Turkey Alashik wants to put that fight together. I don't give a damn what weight division it's at. It's a big fight. It needs to happen. Jerron Ennis says that Terrence Bud Crawford got to see him. We gonna see how this all plays out. Let me know what y'all think about these sanctioning bodies all of a sudden now showing favoritism towards Bud Crawford. Stripping Sebastian Fundora for fighting Errol Spence when Bud Crawford already had a fight signed, sealed, and delivered with Madrimov for the WBA strap. Let me know how y'all feel about all this. Drop a comment in the comment section. Make sure you hit my like button, subscribe to the channel, and y'all already know how I do. Diego talking that boxing again, and I'm gone. Everybody speak. Rock, rock. Got the top lit down. Leaning to the right with the base of